Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's segment with me, Classic, on Campus Drive TV. On this show, we seek to educate, inform, and most of all, entertain you. Today, we are educating you. We have with us a gentleman from the Heritage Christian University College, Amasaman, in our midst. Welcome, Mr. Asempa. Thank you for having me. Tell us about yourself. So my name is Prince Asempai J, level 300 student of Heritage Christian College University, reading business IT management. Once again, welcome, Mr. Asempa. Thank you for having me. How was learning before the COVID-19? Okay, so learning before the COVID-19 has been great. Before the COVID, learning was great. Yes. It was great. And how has it been after the COVID? Okay, I wouldn't say it wasn't great, but generally we're managing, which is a blending between um, the digital system and then the manual. So it's great. It's great too. It's great. Yeah. How has it been? How, how are the processes? Has it been stressful? How, how has learning been on the internet? Um, learning on the internet has been very simple. Um, with people who are acquainted with the system usage, it's simple. But for people who usually do the manual system where you need to go for lectures and lecture halls, you need to attend classes, print handouts and all the stuff, it will be a little bit of um, a change in your system, yeah. It'll be a little bit of a problem, you know. It will be a little bit of, it will be a little bit challenging for them, okay. yes. So are you saying um, online learning has um, saved you time and money? Yes, it has saved me time, but not money, actually. Why not money? Um, because you'd have to buy data. You have to purchase um, airtime or credit for data usage, so, yeah. It's making it a lot expensive because data be. in Ghana is expensive. We sure, own it. It's it is. very, it's really very expensive. expensive. Okay. So how has it affected your learning? Okay. So um, before COVID, okay. um, my learning system, my learning was great because I could attend class, I could have the interaction with my lecturers, and I could have the interaction with my colleagues too. So we tend to learn more compared to the time that um, COVID hit and we'd have to learn from our individual homes. There yeah. you don't get to ask more questions now because even the, data, the data you're using, you'd have to manage it okay. because you need to attend another class and a few things. So before COVID, it was great, but after COVID, it wasn't that wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So COVID has um, sort of um, affected your learning negatively, is that what you're saying? Yes, COVID though has affected my learning negatively. It has taught me some new things. Yeah. Like? Um, like um, how to be able to use um, Gmail, okay. Google Mail, to really use Google Mail. Okay. Because um, all we know was just um, send message yeah, via mail. Just yeah. send message to your colleagues or a few people. But um, after the COVID hit, we mm -hmm. get to learn that we could even use Google to um, attend lectures. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's one of so it's 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 something innovative. It's nice. It's great. So even Zoom, Zoom wasn't so known until the COVID strike, and then all these online course, lectures because, came um, about. Um, the systems used this time were ma major majority of them are um, Zoom and then um, Google Meet. But then before then, we we never really knew about Google Me Google Meet, um, mm. Zoom. No, yeah. but. And then Skype too, yes, but yeah, Skype. right after the COVID hit, we need to do everything visual. So yeah. people started investing into um, visual platforms and they're making a lot actually from COVID. So um, would you prefer manual, the manual way of learning to the digital way of learning? Yeah, not exactly. Mm -hmm. I would prefer it based on conditions. Okay. You see, um, Ghana here, our educational systems, um, our top universities, our top universities have used the system of the manual system for quite a while. Yeah. But then the modern ones, like Heritage, is now using the, um, the, digital, the dig digital system. And as a result, it has helped students. Okay, so you don't get to print handouts every day or every semester. But then, now that the COVID hit, students are supposed to by uh, to have a laptop, yeah. you are supposed to attend lectures 
via um, online. And so not all students can afford to purchase a laptop. Yeah. And not all of them have the laptops to afford. So that is a problem. So I would say that with COVID, um, our educational system, there has been a glitch a little in our educational system with the COVID hit. With the COVID hit, wow. Okay. All right. So what do you say about continuing with the online learning? Okay. Should, should um, next academic um, semester resume? Um, continuing with the online studies with me, if I'm speaking for personal experience, I would say it's best okay. because it's still exposing us to a few things. We're learning to adjust and that is how we grow. But then for all the colleagues, I would say no, it wouldn't help. Then we'd have to find a method okay. to help them fill in that gap that they are missing because not all of them have the laptops. Yeah. And it's just a few of which students, not even up to 30% of the entire student going or the entire tertiary going population mm -hmm. that are using laptops today. Very much, yes. that's so true. So, so what, 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 what do you say about um, people, the students who were not able to join online learning last semester because of, because of one reason or the other? Um, I'd say that um, for other students who have reasons mm -hmm. why they couldn't attend the, the lectures, I wouldn't blame them much mm -hmm. because um, I was also a victim to a few of these reasons before okay. I gradually adjusted due to a few things. Where I was at the time when the COVID hit and we, had to, we need to start online lectures, I had to move from that place to a different location to be able to um, access a better net, to have a better network to okay. access um, the, the lectures. So I would say it's the geographical locations it's also mm -hmm. a very big problem it's very, a very, very big factor very 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 so big with that i think we didn't have to blame the mind but all we have to do is just um they keep they need to keep learning yeah they need to much. keep adjusting because in growth you don't just you, you don't have to stay at one place but you need to adjust so we'll be able to at least pass um at least complete your education uh, your tertiary education with a first class or a second class upper being the best yeah. being the best being the best he says yeah. so we have um online studies yeah. right with this online studies would would students prefer to be at home joining in or would they prefer to be in school i prefer student being on campus and attend and do and attend the visual classes because that will help compared to the, those at home because when you're home um a little distractions a little distraction and you don't really know what you're doing and you don't really have that sense of purpose to okay. really attend class every time you you get to miss some of your class your class sessions but then when you're on campus even a colleague will tell you hey guy we've got a class here we've got a class at this time and that will actually put you on air on 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 on, on your toes to be able to um attend a class and that will help only observing with with observing the the the, the rule um the precautions laid down to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 COVID okay so he says students will prefer to be at school whilst joining in the online lectures than to be at home because of distractions we are going for a quick break when we are back we'll know students preparedness for schools resumption. Heritage Christian College or HCC is a university college affiliated to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST, and we are accredited by the National Accreditation Board, NAB. HCC is a distinctive Christian university in Ghana today. It's a university intentionally set up to provide what I call a missing link in the tertiary education delivery in Ghana and on the continent of Africa. Unemployment is a huge issue in our country, Ghana, and in, for that matter, in the whole of Africa. And, and that is the difference that Heritage seeks to make. Helping to have the Ghanaian young people train and give themselves meaningful jobs without having to wait, this is phenomenal. And we are focused on delivering that. 
The Center for Entrepreneurship, Philanthropy and Ethics is one of the units of HCC that has decided to help the students to be able to develop their skills in entrepreneurship, uh, help them to be able to write business plans, to uh, employ other people. And then they do all of these things in the context of ethics and giving back to society. Before you finish HCC, you have your own business. It's a privilege to you because you won't be counting around looking for a job. You already have your job. So with a CEP, if you're a student in Heritage Christian University, you have a great opportunity of becoming an entrepreneur right after school. Our company name is Rosemarsh Farms Ghana Limited. Our vision is to be the preferred choice for quality, affordable, and value-added agricultural products. At Apex Track, we are into tracking of vehicles, uh, both for commercial and for private owners and we provide value for our customers. HCC gave us the opportunity to become who we are today. They gave me the opportunity to own a laptop to, so that I could pay in installments. Per the course I'm doing, the laptop that they exposed us to really helped me. The actual thing that convinced me to come to Heritage was the fact that I'm going to have 24-hour Wi-Fi. A student is going to be given a laptop. It was like, that's it, that's where I want to be. We don't just want to train people to go and then uh, cater for the physical needs of people, but to also cater for the spiritual need. These leaders as well also start their own uh, community development initiatives to impact lives in various uh, parts of Ghana and Africa. Uh, although we are new, uh, we are already seeing evidence of the impact uh, of the kind of teaching and training we are giving them. We have students who have been in school for two, three years, and some of them have already started small businesses, not big, but they are excited about it. And we have students, a number of them, who are right now working on their business plans to be uh, assessed and evaluated and coached. And, and it's really gathering momentum. We are inviting you to enroll this admission period, admission is in progress for the 2020-2021 academic year. Our degree programs include Bachelor of Business Administration in Marketing, Accounting, Banking and Finance, Human Resource Management, Business Information Technology Management. We also have Bachelor of Science Information Technology and Bachelor of Theology. SEC runs tutorials for professional programs in ICA, Ghana, CIM, CIB, ICM. ICM courses are professional computing, journalism and media studies, accounting and finance, marketing and public relations, human resource, project management, and business studies. Applicants who want short courses within two to three months can also come for programs such as web designing, graphic designing, basic computing, MS office suit, programming, and networking. SEC's admissions requirement conform to the National Accreditation Board standards, and that is three core three electives including English and Maths in WASI or SSC with credit pass or better. We also admit with DBC and ABC. We also admit HND top-ups. Mature students can apply, take an entrance exams, and be admitted upon passing. Welcome back from the short breather. You're still here with me, Classic, on Campus Drive TV. Before the break, we're talking about how COVID-19 has affected our learning. That's the online learning, how it has affected our lives and our schooling. Now we're going to talk about school resuming. Schools are resuming, though dates are not, some dates are not out yet. Some schools are resuming. 
and how is it going to be? What are students' preparedness for school? Mr. Sempa, how, how, how are students prepared? How are they preparing? Let me put it that way. How are they preparing for school? So generally, I think about 70% of students are prepared to get back to campus and study, but there is this big gap of a question as to whether it's going to be still the online or the manual class we used to have some years back or some few months back. So yes, generally students are prepared. Yeah, I've students said that. Are, prepared. Students are prepared. Every student is prepared to get back to campus. Yes. Is it to meet to to meet lectures, to meet their friends and have fun, or the main reason why they want to go is to go learn? Yeah, the main reason why we all want to go back to school is to learn. Unless well, maybe anybody has any obvious answer, but <laughs> basically, we are all going back to school to study. The yeah. number one purpose is to study, and that is what students are going to do. So yes, our preparedness is towards studies. Towards studies. I like yeah. that. I like that. I mean, you are a whole new vibe, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so secondary school students are in school now. The um, SHS2 students, they are in school now. And we have the JHS2 students too, also in school. I think JHS2 and JHS1, I'm not so sure. They are also in school. What do you think about they being in school? Do you think it's a good idea? How do you think this, this um, whole um, COVID-19 thing is going to affect them? Yeah, I think um, previously, when um, we all went on a break and went back home, so now, it has really affected most of the students. Okay. The fact that they are not under strict supervision to study, the fact that they are, not, they are not being monitored as to what to do, or what to do at what time they should do these things. Students are not being able to study. And you, they are lagging. Okay. So with that, with they going back to school, surely their form twos, and no, they are going in badges. Yes, they so are with their form badges. twos and their um, um, final year is going back to school to study, Yes, I think it's, it's a great method. It's, it's a great initiative um, taken by the government because it's going to help. Yes. It's going to help them in the academics. It's going to help. Yes. Yes. Okay, Prince, so what are your expectations for this semester as your school resumes? I'm expecting that um, authorities will put all the measures in place okay. for the prevention of the spread of COVID-19. And I'm hoping to have that one-on-one -on -one lecture club the one on one lecture with um, my professors and my colleagues and um but if not so to we could adjust we could keep adjusting to the digital system the online system okay. and i think that will help us most most yes so you're expecting the semester to be great to be splendid actually. what about the results okay expecting it to boom of course i'm expecting my results to boom actually wow. because i'm not going in as not to play around but okay. we need to study really hard and show you attack your assignments one on one as a head on coalition okay. and yeah you yeah you'll be able to to do it out yeah. that's amazing it's been great speaking to you prince we we wish you all the best and we hope to see you some other time sure. this brings us to the end of today's show on campus drive tv a very big thank you to our guest mr asempa thank you to the HCC library staff, and a very big thank you to our production team. Don't forget to adhere to all COVID-19 protocols. Stay safe, stay tuned for the next segment. Campus Drive TV, please, please press play. Play. <laughs> <laughs> please please press play. play. Campus Drive TV, please, please press, press play. play.